Goes to Chris Korb. Korb in toward the top of the box. Leaves it down on the end line for Ampai Patakwong. Has two Buckeyes on him. Feeds it into the box anyway. Bunbury spinning in place. Down he goes. And that's going to be a penalty kick. Bunbury went down in the box. And quickly, our FIFA certified referee, Shane Butler, signaled penalty. And so the Zips will get the penalty kick from the spot, just their second one of the year. And these go in most of the time, but there's no guarantee. The penalty kick spot is 12 yards out. It's going to be Blair Gavin, who has made one of these for Ohio State this year. Lampson, the goalkeeper, cannot move until the ball is kicked. And then if he would happen to save it, remember, it is the resumption of play. That is a free ball, and anybody can go get it. 20-45 20-45 to go in the half, and Akron with a golden chance to take the lead. Blair Gavin for the penalty. Here he comes. He scores! Just inside the left post. It's a goal! And the Zips on the penalty kick by Blair Gavin have the one to nothing lead at 24-23 of the first half. And Blair Gavin... Has two goals on the year, both on penalty kicks, and the Zips now can play for the lead. I would just assume that the uh, Buckeyes not thrilled with that penalty call in the box, but Bunbury was in pretty deep, and he was taken down, and Blair Gavin finishes it off to make it a 1-0 Akron lead on the PK. Actually, the goalkeeper, Lampson, had that one figured out. I mean, he dove to his right, and the ball was on that post, but it was just out of his reach. He may have even gotten a part of a glove on it, but it's an Akron goal and a one to the field now for Akron and Bunbury. Bunbury into the box, cruising in on the left. Bunbury fires, and it's batted in front, and the Buckeyes just clear it off the line. And look at that ball was going wide, and Ohio State stopped it and almost had an own goal. And now in midfield, Michael Nanshaw, a collision. Back comes McGill. Now Corb gets in there. And we don't want to have any, uh, these two teams don't like each other, but you don't want any fighting. McGill went after either Corb or Nanshaw. And now Ampai Patakwong, and Anthony is not a very big fella. He is all of 5'9 and 160. We're going to stop the clock at 12.55 to go in the half. And now Valentin is into it with Doug Verhoff. And we have little skirmishes all over the field, and I'm going to assume that we're going to have a red card. Or at least yellow cards, we know that. And this is McGill. I'm not really sure what McGill was that angry about. There was a collision on the near side involving McGill and Michael Nanshoff, and the foul was called on Nanshoff. And uh, all kinds of stuff broke out after that. Went to a soccer game and a hockey match broke out. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Akron ISP Sports Network. Keeping up pressure on them, eventually uh, you're going to find the net. Michael Nanshoff on the near side, going to left foot it on the cross in front. The header and a goal! Michael Nanshoff! With a beautiful feed to Darlington Nagby. And the Zips have a 2-0 lead by Michael Nanshoff. Coming off a four-assist game and just a beautiful curling pass into the box. And Nagby behind the defender headed it home. Darlington Nagby with his uh, goal number four on the year. And Nanshoff sixth assist. How about that one? And Michael Nanshoff will left foot the kick into the box, and it is a goal! Oh, what a play! And that was Ben Spees! My, oh, my! The free kick was taken by Nanshoff, and it was Ben Spees. Wow! Zemanski, sorry, 13, not 17. Well, they won't care. They're from the same high school. And Ben Zemanski, but great service again from Michael Nanshoff. Wow. And the Zips count again. 
at the 67-37 mark to make it 3 nothing. Counting down. And there it is as the AK Rowdies will let a blast on the horn one more time, and this one is all over.